What's up guys, it's Christina here. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new, make sure to hit that subscribe button because I'm about to drop some knowledge bombs on you right now, okay? <laughs> All right, so what I'm about to tell you is going to blow your mind. I've got a list of things that everyday things, things that you have laying around your house, things you use on a daily basis that you are using wrong. Let's get started with the first one. Just hear me out, just wait. You know this, this is the pasta ladle, the pasta spoon, whatever you wanna call it. It has little forked things on it so that you can easily scoop out some long pasta from your cooked pasta pot, I guess, whatever. It usually has a hole in it. Why does it have a hole in it? It's because it's utilized as a serving portion for dry noodles, dry pasta, usually straight pasta noodles. So I have a very deluxe plastic bag of some H-E-B fettuccine. And you're like, you know what? I've got seven people today. I don't know how many portions is seven portions. It's an odd number. Let's figure it out. So you got your noodles here. And what you're gonna do is just kinda ploop it through to kinda guesstimate. Okay, that is like way too much. This is probably two servings worth. And see, I would have thought eyeballing it that that was one serving size, but it's not. So now you know that when you're taking, and I actually meant to grab the spaghetti, but it should work, yeah, see? Now you know that this is one serving size. So now I've got one portion, and I'm utilizing probably half of the pasta that I normally would be using. So that's saving me money and saving on food. Speaking of food, you're cooking a delicious pasta sauce in your saucepan. Did you know that this hole right here, we always think that it might be used for like hanging on a rack or a, a series of hooks or like a, a pot rack that might hang over your kitchen, something like that. No, you'd be wrong. That's actually a secondary use. This is most commonly made for is actually to hold your stirring spoon while you're cooking so that the sauce doesn't drip everywhere. So anyway, that's a thought. Me, I would prefer to use like a spoon rest because I think just think it's less messy. Um, I've actually tried this method out and it just tends to just kind of drip stuff like back. In. It, it would work for a longer spoon. Try it out, see if you have something that works, and then you can impress all your friends at your stay at home dinner party that you've not invited, that you've invited virtually via Zoom about your like little genius cooking hack that you just figured out from a YouTube video. Let us just all take a moment of silence for my last can of Dr. Pepper that I am sacrificing for the creation of this video. Oh, don't be fooled. I will be drinking it. I have a little tip for you. You know those guys bottle openers that they have on their key rings and was very popular when you were in high school and every guy had one on his key. You know what I'm talking about? This one. This is actually HB's from high school. I never knew this, but I was doing a little digging and I found out that this little hook right here, normally this part is used for the bottle cap and this little hook right here, you're like, what the heck is it for? Well, ladies, it's for you. It's to save your beautiful, delicate manicure from being destroyed by a soda can. So just stick it here and you use it, boop, there you go. Perfectly open, no nails were harmed in the making of this video. Pretty good. All right, so I'm gonna set this aside, but we're gonna keep the Dr. Pepper because Dr. Pepper has another use. This might be the one that you've seen. Comment down below if you already know any of these little like mind-blowing tips or everyday items you're using wrong in this video, Comment them down below if you already know them. If there's one that you know, it's probably this one. It's so genius, it just bears repeating because I just feel like I forget this literally every single time I have a Dr. Pepper. Which is more often than I care to admit. All right, so this little hole in the little tab here, you're gonna turn that around so that it's over the opening that you'd normally drink from. And you can put your straw in it and it stabilizes your straw. Now this is even more effective if you're still living in the stone age and using plastic straws. Um, that's also very helpful because plastic straws are so light that they tend to just go boop, 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 and straight into our oceans. But all jokes aside, if you do, if you are utilizing a plastic straw, then it helps keep it in place and it won't sit there and bubble out of the can, which sometimes these straws can do because of the carbonation. So there you go. My next trick is actually having to do with your jeans. So you know we all were searching on the internet, we're like, I wanna buy a new pair of jeans, and they're always listed as five pocket jeans. And you're like, but mine have four pockets? No, they have five, that little tiny pocket down here. You'd be like, what is that for? Is that for change, loose change or something? You could use it for loose change. 
but it originated because of pocket watches. So usually pocket watches had a long chain and some sort of hook on the end of it. And you would hook the end of the chain on your jeans. And when jeans were invented, it was invented as a way for workers to more easily carry around their pocket watch because wristwatches were not invented yet. So this actual fifth pocket here is actually the perfect size to fit a standard issue pocket watch. And we still have them on our jeans today, but you know what I've discovered is a really great use for this often neglected pocket? Your AirPods. It fits AirPods perfectly. Try it out. It fits your AirPods. Everybody, you need to try it out. If I haven't blown your mind yet, if I have, please hit the thumbs up button and make sure you're subscribed. But if I haven't, just stay tuned because if you are still driving a car that takes fuel, which 98% of Americans are, next time you get in your car, check your dashboard. I want you to look at your fuel gauge. Remember when we used to leave our houses? So much fun, right? We used to rent cars to get around in whatever exotic destination we were at at the time. And you'd be like, I don't know where the gas tank is. It's an American car. I've never driven an American car. I've never driven a Japanese car. I've never driven a German car. I've got a tip for you, okay? You don't have to do that little dance where you're like driving up to the gas station and then you're on the wrong side and then you have to hop back in your car and like look kind of like, oh, well, I'm an idiot. And then drive around and kind of position your car back into the place it's supposed to be. Just look at your dashboard. Look at the fuel icon. The fuel pump has typically, there's a little arrow and it will be on the left or right side and that's telling you whether it's on the left side of the car or the right side of the car. And you just have to go wherever it's pointing. If it's going off to the left, then you just open your car door and it's on the driver's side. If it's pointing off to your right, then it's on the passenger side. And so I hope that at least makes it seem a little bit more slick when you're driving up in your rental car or your friend's car that you're filling up with gas before you're you know, heading off to the airport or something, you now know what side your gas tank is on. You're welcome. If you found any of these tips at all helpful, please consider subscribing. I make videos several times per week. I have a diverse range of topics on my channel. If you like luxury, tech, medicine, lifestyle, vlogs, hacks, travel tips, you name it. Gaming now, we're here. It's all on this channel. So make sure you subscribe because I guarantee there's gonna be something that you're gonna wanna watch. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.